Yeah, I think it's uh, somewhat autobiographical. My producer had the idea, and I and I'm going stray dog. What the hell are we gonna write this about? But as we kind of dove in, uh, so to speak, um, it really, uh, you know, country radio and, and much of the industry has been great to me uh, throughout the course of my career. The fans have been awesome to me. Award shows have not, uh, been certain aspects have not. Um, and I don't really shy away from talking about that. I find that I feel like the more genuine and the more honest I am with, with my fans, the more success we have uh, with them on the road and, uh, and all that. So, uh, you know, we talk about it, whether it be in an interview or uh, through our music, like Stray Dog. I think there's a few lines in the song, but my favorite is, I don't bark, I just bite. I'm not gonna warn you, I'm just gonna come after you kind of deal. There's a game that you play to have success in, in this business, uh, and I don't play it. I just don't. Speaking of biting, it's probably bit me a little bit, but I can sleep at night. I think fans, uh, maybe we don't give them enough credit for how intelligent they are. The more open and honest and genuine I am with my fans, I think it um, it ends up uh, turning out better for us. And um, more of them show up at shows and buy albums and do all that stuff. Uh, a stray Dog is up there. Um, I think they all are honest, though. I mean, I, I, I don't record or write a song that I don't feel is honest, you know. I mean, Get Rich or Drunk Trying, like, I'm not out there looking for a sugar mama, obviously. There's a little uh, ridiculousness there. Um, uh, Better Slow is a song that they're... Uh, some lines in, in there that like for example there's a line about losing a, a pet and my I wrote that song right around the time that my wife and I had to as adults put down our uh, pet dog which was difficult to say the least uh, but it was the first time we had done that as adults you know like our parents had done that and made those decisions uh you know growing up but uh but i don't think there's a song i've ever written or recorded that i don't believe is uh honest yeah he and i are like brothers i mean um he and i've been working together for golly 20 years or something like that and um he always says this i i don't but he 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 says like if he were an artist he would be me um and so i feel like it's pretty tight uh relationship and we kind of finish each other's sentences and it's one of those kind of relationships you know and uh, and again, I mean, we he grew up in Georgia, I grew up in Arkansas, kind of the same way, small towns, and uh, musically, we, we have a lot of um, similarities as far as tendencies and how we write and, and you know, what we expect in the studio and, and those different things. And uh, so, yeah, it's it's been a, a great relationship for couple of decades now which is kind of hard to believe but we met I don't know I think it was through uh, a publisher uh, we met um, and we met in Franklin which is south of here what 20 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever we had a little breakfast place and I was looking for songs to record 
uh, to go pitch to labels to try to get a record deal and, and nobody would give me their best songs which I understand now you know because you know nobody had a clue who I was and I totally get it uh, but the first couple two or three songs he played for me that he had written that he was kind of pitching to me so to speak I was like this is it like this is exactly what I'm looking for and what I'm talking about and you know we kind of developed a relationship from from that point on and um, and again it become like family yeah, it was awful yeah uh, the first 40 I wrote were awful but one of the first songs I wrote when I moved to Nashville, uh, Jeremy and I wrote together. Uh, we wrote two songs. Uh, one was called A Long Way From Home, which I still think is a really good song. It's never been on an album. Um, and the second song was Small Town USA that we wrote together. So I guess, uh, you know, that was a, that was a good, uh, sign, if you will. Yeah, when I first uh, moved to town, uh, my my intention was to go sell as many tickets and albums and all that as I could. And um, I didn't know that you know songwriting was a, a thing that that I would be into, uh, so to speak, and. Uh, but you're always trying to, I think as a new artist especially, you're trying to find your voice and what you're trying to say as an artist and do and be as an artist. And I think songwriting uh, helped kind of define that for me. I, I really didn't know what I wanted to say until I started uh, writing songs. And, you know, Small Town USA, for example, I was... I was 18 years old when I wrote that song on a $400 guitar. I was just, I went in that day to write with Jeremy, Brian Mayer uh, was the other co-writer. And I go, I miss home. Like, I want to go home, like, you know, to Arkansas. And, and that's kind of where that idea came from. And so I learned through that song that like, okay, this is the story I can tell as as a as an artist, you know. Just be honest with people. I keep going back to the honesty, and but it, it works. You know, the, uh, I think it's the uh, second verse. Uh, it talks about I watch people leave and run right back. I never wanted any part of that, and. Um, I didn't, but I did leave because I had to, and then, but then I did go back. So that one always kind of cracks me up a little bit. You know, I had that title for I don't know five or six years, and so typically what happens? You sit down in a room to write, and you scroll through your phone and go, "I got this title." I got this title, I got, and you know whether it's worth a crap or not by the reaction of your co-writers. And So I threw this title out for like five years and they go, eh, 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 eh. and then one day I threw it out there and uh, somebody goes, oh, that's awesome, let's do that. So. Um, I didn't know how to write it. I just knew it was a good title. I, th I thought it would sell t-shirts, uh, but um, yeah, it's fun. Um, and if I'm being completely honest with you, I didn't decide to close the album with that for any particular reason. <laughs> it just ended up being the last song on the album. I, I felt strong about it being a good idea. And to me, the hardest thing about writing good songs is finding an idea that's worth writing. Um, and I, I really felt strongly that that one was. I thought it was a really well written song. Um, it's a little, pr 
progressive sounding maybe for us um, and I had just met uh, Priscilla uh, maybe two three four months prior to and I thought man she would be awesome on this and it, it you know I could get her to do it and um, she said yes thankfully and um, but yeah I, I thought it sounded like a hit record and and I thought it was again a really good idea um, and typically anytime I record a song that I don't write I I wish I had written them and this song when I heard it I go man I wish I'd have wrote that and she knows how to use TikTok and all that stuff so she's kind of trying to teach me all about that I, you know I'm, I'm a little slow in that department and I have a 13 year old she kind of helps me in that department uh, a, a, a little bit but um, that's not my generation so I'm I'm a little outdated if you will that's why I got Priscilla I'm gonna hitch my wagon to her and let her uh, do all that Wow. Um, to me, the best uh, songwriters, and this is, again, just my opinion, are as conversational as possible. Uh, so even if, like Alan Jackson, for example, like, hell, he won't even rhyme stuff that's supposed to rhyme, but it's like you're having a conversation with him, and it's real and genuine, and... That's my favorite uh, type of songwriting. Um, draw from uh, your own personal experiences um, because I've learned that if it's personal to you, it's personal to the masses. That's two, I'm, I'm running out here. Um, you know, uh, to me, I'm a lyric guy. Um, you know, melodies are obviously important, but to me, if, if the uh, lyrics are, are great, um, you got a good song. So that that's my focus anyway. I think I've maybe gotten better at being introspective and, you know, knowing who I am as a person, I think has helped me know who I am more so as an artist telling my story to my fans that has worked and so I think I've gotten better over time at least I hope so uh, over time at telling that particular story better slow I, I think um, is is one that you know to me makes a lot of sense where I'm at stray dog which I've talked about both those uh, songs. Hell, I can't even remember what else is on the album, to be honest with you. I've been living with these songs for like three years now. Um, but those are a couple that, that make a lot of sense uh, to me right now. But, uh, again, it was pretty autobiographical. And, um, you know, I don't, it was never, my intention but from the kind of the beginning of my career I was labeled an outlaw or an outlier or whatever again I've, I've learned that the, the more honest I am with my fans and you know people text me on our text line or they tweet me or they you know or our uh, podcast or whatever where they go why wasn't you at the ACMs or why wasn't you at the CMAs? I'm like, hell, they didn't invite me. So um, there's kind of some of that thread running through that song and is one of the reasons we named the album that. And I think my fans relate to that honesty. Not really, I don't. Um, again, I, I didn't set out to be that or do that, uh, but I don't know. Maybe moving to back home to Arkansas 
uh, was unpopular and I don't know, just being honest, which again, in, in this industry, uh, not everybody is, uh, and I try to be, and so that's that's sometimes unpopular, but so be it. I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you if I didn't. Music is uh, super important to me, and I love playing, I love getting on stage. And I will do it as, as long as I'm allowed to, but it's not the most important thing in my life. Uh, God and my family are. And, and so, and I need to get better at being great for both of them uh, than I am. Uh, but that's kind of where the priorities lie for me. And I don't know that that's, you know, common in our industry all the time. You know, I love being creative. Uh, I, to me, there's, there's, I don't know that there's a, an, another thing that can replace a thought popping in your head and then standing on stage in front of, uh, you know, thousands of people or whatever, and them singing it back to you. I mean, it's pretty amazing. It's, you know, magical, so to speak. Um, and so that's that's pretty special, you know, to, to see it go from absolutely nothing to, you know, a big record or, you know, whatever. Um, and, and even like, you know, I go to the grocery store or, meet and greet or whatever and and you hear somebody say hey this changed my life or it saved my life or you know got me through a difficult time or and to just think that like I was on stage and I had this thought pop in my head or what it's pretty amazing um, so those moments to me never get old I think it speaks to the power of not only music, but specifically country music. Again, it, it never gets old. I, I had a, uh, a couple at our show, I don't know, two, three weeks ago, and she had, uh, the, the wife had lost two children in a house fire and told me that her, my music saved her life, and I don't say that boastfully. I say that hum, in a humble way where I go, I don't even understand that, uh, but, you know, the times where I am, you know, uh, dealing with something at home, my kid's sick, or my wife and I are into it about me not taking the garbage out or whatever, uh, and I still gotta go on stage. Uh, those are the moments that you go, you know what, I'm really, really blessed to be able to do this and, and inspire you to go out there and give every ounce of energy you got. Uh, so. Yeah, if Riley were, you know, he's really let himself go. Uh, I think he probably should work out a little bit more. And I don't know if he could somehow become a little more handsome. I think we would have maybe a, a possibility for this song to be a success. Uh, clearly, I'm, I'm joking. Um, no, he, he's great. I, I'm a huge Riley fan. Um, he and I have gotten to know each other over the last, I don't know, five, six, seven years. I think we've been label mates, and I think we kind of see the world through the same lens, so to speak. and. Um, yeah, I'm super proud to have him be a, a, a part of this album and, and this song. And, you know, this song, although delivered in a, a humorous way, I, I do think there's a, a, a poignant message of everybody get along. You know, I, I think we're all probably a little closer together than we realize. You know, it seems like we're so far apart on everything. But I think if we would uh, shut our mouths and 
listen a little better, myself included. Um, I think we're probably a little uh, less far apart than we, we realize we are. And that's kind of the message of the song. You know, uh, I mean, I think there are a handful of guys that would have made sense, if, to be honest, um, that I'm great friends with and have great respect for. Um, he was, uh, I think he had just, we recorded this like four or five years ago, three, four years ago. Um, so he had just had a couple of uh, big records, uh, you know, independently, and and we had played a number of shows together, and it was funny because right before we uh, recorded this song, he had shared with me a, a, a photo of him at my meet and, meet and greet, like 20 years ago, or 15 years ago, whatever it was, a long time ago. And uh, so I thought that was kind of funny. And I just had him on my podcast, and um, I, I thought, hey, he'd be perfect for this song. So, and he said yes. He's been a long time fan of yours, too. It seems with his Maybe, I, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Kind of funny. It makes me feel old, but.